We are almost there. Just one more step and our program is ready. Our final step involves applying the correct sharing settings to our event program. Let us complete this step and review our program in the Capture app. Once again, we will select the program we have been working on in order to proceed. Note that the program's public sharing settings have been summarized here as public view and edit. We want to make sure that we modify this so others cannot interact with the program you have created. We can go back to the Access tab and scroll down in order to see the Roles and Access heading where we can modify our sharing settings. To modify the sharing settings for our program, click on the program name. For our example, we want to turn public access off for both metadata and data. In order to do this, click on the pencil button next to public access. We can see the metadata is currently set to can edit and view, and the data is set to no access. In order to modify this, select no access for metadata. We can leave the data as no access, as that is the configuration that we want to apply for public level access. At the bottom of the sharing settings dialog, use the enter names field in order to enter your username. This will search for your user and allow you to apply sharing settings to your particular user. Select your user after you have searched for it. Once you have selected it, it will appear in the Who Has Access section. Assign yourself the appropriate sharing access to the program by clicking on the pencil button. By default, the user has been assigned, can edit and view in the metadata section so we can leave this as is. We should modify the data sharing settings to can capture and view by selecting this option. Once we have applied the sharing settings, we can then click apply. Now we need to ensure that the sharing settings from the program are the same as the sharing settings for what we call a program stage. This was configured for us automatically, and during the configuration process, we did not have to worry about it too much. We only have to think about it when we apply our sharing settings. First, select the box next to the program stage name. In our case, it is already selected. Next, click on the button Apply to Selected Stages beside the program name. We can see that the text underneath the program stage changes as new sharing settings are applied. This step may seem repetitive for an event program, but it is necessary to grant this type of access to each stage as it comes into play again more when working with tracker programs. When completed, you should see the text, no public access, accessible to one user, underneath both the program and program stage headings. The final tab Create Notifications is optional. This is discussed in the Tracker Level 1 Academy and is out of scope for this course. Now that we have assigned all the appropriate settings for our event program, we can scroll down and click on Save. The program is now saved and has been configured to our specifications. It can now be reviewed in the Capture app. Let's view it to ensure the form has been created correctly. Navigate to the Capture app by selecting Capture from the Apps menu. Here you will see the organization unit that you have been assigned. Go ahead and select that organization unit. After you have selected the organization unit, select the program that you have made. Click on New Event to view the event registration section form. If we review our program, we can see that our program looks exactly how we have specified it when we created it. We can enter data into this program and it will be saved into the data elements we have made.
When we enter data, we can see that our value types have been applied to the data elements and option sets are used where we have specified them. We can save the event when we have completed data entry. And we can see that the event is saved when we view the front page list of the program. Let us highlight what we have learned in this subsection. We reviewed the design of our event program and filled in a design template that we could refer to regularly as we actually created our program in DHIS2. After we completed the review of our design, we went to create our metadata inside of DHIS2. We started by creating options and option sets through the maintenance app. After we had created these items, we created our tracker type data elements. We then took the data elements we created and placed them into a data element group. After the data elements and data element group was made, we created an event program. Within the event program that we made, we assigned our data elements, we created our section-based data entry form, we then assigned our program to organization units, and lastly, we specified our sharing settings. We hope you have been following along with the step-by-step -step activities listed under the videos, but if you haven't, please refer to them for extra practice to help ensure understanding of the information presented on how to create an event program. Also, please feel free to use the discussion forums to ask questions to other learners or facilitators. Once you have completed the activities and are comfortable with the material, please attempt the graded assignment for this subsection on creating an event program.